Hey everyone, how are you guys doing today? All right, um, so I've been reading in this book um, before I go to work. Uh, I got it the other day at the thrift store. I showed you guys in my haul. It's um, Sacred Marriage. It's from Gary Thomas. This is about what if God designed marriage to make us holy more than to make us happy? Um, sacred marriage. You guys, I know this channel is about being divorced and um, singleness, but I do believe in the um, sanctification of marriage and um, that we are to um, be married. And um, when we say that we um, want to marry someone and we do our vows, to that person we are to um, stick with our vows as Christians we are to do what is right at all times and God says um, we are to grow closer with our spouse um, to God we are not to be changing spouses we are not to be um, getting divorced um, ruining that oneness with Christ um, we are actually to be with our spouse um, to unify with Christ and um, I really do believe that marriages are God-given. Um, it's a gift from God, and God will take um, that man, and he will take that woman, and he will put them together, just like he did Adam and Eve in the garden. And um, that is a um, unification of marriage. Um, I could tell you, when I first met my spouse, um, I wasn't looking. I had no intention to marry again because I had already been divorced and I was in a marriage where there was domestic violence. All the stuff I've had to go through the last two years, um, if I knew that was coming, I probably wouldn't have married my um, husband. I just um, really believed that God gave um, my husband to me um, because he was a Christian and I was a Christian and that everything I've gone through the last couple of years would have never, ever happened. Um, I truly believed that God put us together. And therefore, um, even though he's filed for divorce and moved on into a new relationship, I um, am still one with Christ in my marriage. Um, and so um, I was you know, shopping at the thrift store and saw this book. And I just thought, wow, you know, what if? Marriage was to make us more holy and not happy, you know, um, that meant a lot to me because, um, in my divorce, I've grown closer to God. My relationship, um, with God has grown closer. Um, and it was my marriage that helped make me closer, um, because I had that marriage and, um, I can see what the point of my marriage was now that I'm divorced. And so it's very interesting to um, think of a marriage that has fallen apart in that way. And, and this book talks about how can we use our challenges, our joys, our struggles, and our celebrations of marriage. And how do we draw closer to God in our Christian character? For each one of us um, in our marriages and um, you know even though this is a marriage book I'm gonna take it and apply it to my life um, there's so much in a marriage that um, you have to put into to get it to work and one of the things I just read um, I should have highlighted it but I think it's right about here um, To spiritually benefit from marriage, we have to be honest, you know. Um, in a divorce, you're not honest, and um, there's a lot of lying going on. Um, in um, court battles that I've had to go through just in November, uh, my ex sat up there and lied. Lied to everybody under oath. And... Um, there's no communication and um, it's just 
the Christian character of who we are that is being exposed in a divorce. And it's um, something that should have been exposed in a marriage, and it wasn't in mine. Um, the lies, you guys, the lies. Um, when you claim to be a Christian and you're pretending to be a Christian, um, you know, I always really believed the saying, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Eventually, you're lying and you're cheating. Um, it's going to catch up with you. And um, we have to be honest with each other in our marriages. We have to um, be honest with ourselves, you know. What is our motive when we marry someone? Is it just to have a family? Just to have a kid? Is it just to um, abuse the other person? Is it to get what you want? Um, or are you growing spiritually? Are you growing closer to God together or even separate in your marriage? And I can tell you in my marriage, um, I grew closer to God. That's what I did. And it really became evident to me how much I was growing closer to God. Um, when I really thought I had put God on the back burner of my marriage, um, and I was putting my husband on the front burner of my marriage, um, through my divorce, I really have realized that, um, even though I put God back on that back burner of my life, I was really in prayer and begging him every night, dear God, please help me love my husband. Dear God, help me grow closer to my husband. Help me understand what's going on. And, um, I think that's why my divorce happened was because God's like, here, I'm going to show you what's going on. And, um, so that separation happened and, um, you know, moving forward, this book says we have to look at our disappointments, own up to our ugly attitudes and confront our selfishness. Um, we have to, we have to get rid of ourselves of the notion that the difficulties of marriage can overcome if we simply just pray harder or learn a few simple principles. Most of us have discovered that these simple steps, in quote, simple steps, work only if it, at a superficial level. Why is this? Because there's a deeper question that needs to be answered beyond how can we improve our marriages? What if God didn't design marriage to be easier? What if God had an end in mind that went beyond ever happiness, our comfort, and of our desire to be um, happy as if the world was a perfect place. What if God designed marriage to make us holy more than to make us happy? You know, I can't put into words, and I hope that this book will for me. As I'm going to, you know, keep talking about what I'm reading here. But what if that was true? What if God designed um, marriage to be something that helped us grow closer to him? That puts divorce in a whole nother mind aspect, doesn't it? So if he designed marriage to make us holier, closer to him, in relationship with him, couldn't he use divorce for that same reason? For one of us? Let the other person be the other person? Um... You know, the great thing about divorce is the sin, the lies, the cheating, the um, not following Jesus Christ. I no longer have that burden on me. I now can make my own decisions, and those decisions can be what God wants me to make. Um, 
You know, I've told you guys, when I got divorced, there was this huge relief. Finally, I'm out of uh, this marriage that is causing destruction spiritually for me. Because I knew the lies, the cheating, and the selfishness was going on for many years. I never felt loved in my marriage. Um, I actually have a friend at work right now who's going through the same thing. She doesn't feel respected. She doesn't feel loved in her marriage. And um, her husband one day wants a divorce and one day doesn't want a divorce. And she's stuck in that battle. And um, my words of encouragement is to pray. Pray that God will show you what to do. Um, being on your own is very difficult. Um, relying on God to be that spouse for you, provide for you, take care of you, um, show you the answers to life. It's so hard, you guys. As a single mom, um, just yesterday, I was in the shower crying about how um, I need you, God. I need you so bad right now to show me what you want me to do. Um, you know, and ultimately, I would love for God just to shove me into the right direction that he wants me to take. Um, because I'm lost. I'm lost without him. I can't do this life without Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, when I was married, I would have said, I can't do this without my spouse. And um, that's what I mean when I say I put God on the back burner. I can't do this without my spouse. I need my spouse. But um, through my divorce, I've realized I don't need my spouse. I need God. That's who I need. And he's the only one who matters to me right now. And um, C.S. Lewis says right here, a monumental shift in culture thought as the development of romantic love, romantic love, is very rare. These are perhaps three or four on the record, but I believe that they occur and that this romantic love is one of them. This is not to suggest that romance itself or the desire for more romance is necessarily bad. Good marriages work hard to preserve a sense of romance. But the idea that marriage can survive on romance alone or that romantic feeling are more important than any other consideration when choosing a spouse has wrecked many a marital ship. Okay, so you guys, um, for me, in my marriage, um, there was no romance. There was no romance. Um, there was romance at the very beginning of dating, but once there was marriage, there was no romance. Um, as a matter of fact, three weeks after we were married, I found out there was no romance. Um... But did I file for divorce? No, I wanted to stick it out. I loved my spouse on the idea that we were Christians. I stayed with my spouse on the um, belief that we both were going towards our relationship with Christ together. Um, and it was soon after the romance was gone um, I realized that we were on different levels spiritually. It was soon after um, that romance was gone that I felt trapped in a marriage with someone who I was unequally yoked with. Someone has already read this book and has highlighted some important parts. And um, one of these highlighted marks is the, um, one of the reality of human conditions is such that we must salvage our fragments of happiness out of life's inevitable sufferings. As a Christian, you guys, that's amazing to think about. What was the fragments of 
suffering that we can think of um, that has been life-changing for us out of our marriages. Um, and, you know, even just think spiritually, what did Christ do for us? He died on the cross for our sins. Um, he suffered for us. And it is through our suffering for each other and um, ourselves that we can learn um, God's plan. You know, if it wasn't for God dying on the cross, we wouldn't know his plan for us. His plan of salvation for each, every one of us. Um, his plan of us making that decision to do what's right, to do what is honorable and worthy to Jesus Christ and to um, take what we've, you know, learned by him setting the example, you know, in our marriages, we have to set the example of um, Christ in us to our spouse, even to each other. As we're growing closer, um, I can tell you that's what attracted me and my spouse together was our relationship with Christ prior to meeting each other. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have ever married. I know I wouldn't have married him. Um, as a matter of fact, when I first met my spouse, I didn't like him. I didn't like him. Everybody's like, when are you guys getting married? When are you guys getting... I don't like this guy. I, I wish he would leave me alone. I don't like him. And it was the selfishness. It was the lying and the cheating and the arrogancy. And it was the um, narcissistic behavior that I saw in him prior to me saying I do. And when I married him, it was because God told me to. And we got pregnant with our son on our wedding night. And I did the best I could as a Christian mom um, and wife. Um, I didn't have that close relationship with Jesus Christ during my marriage that I needed to be the best mom and wife I could be. And I could have done better. Um... But I felt trapped. I felt trapped in a loveless Christian marriage. And the romance was gone. Three weeks after we were married, romance was gone. You cannot keep a marriage together based on romance, you guys. Romance, love has no elasticity to it. It cannot be stretched. It's you got it or you don't. And what does that mean if you don't have love for each other in a marriage? True love is real. Loving somebody, no matter what they do, even if they file divorce, to continue to love them no matter what um, the sinfulness in that person is, the lying, the cheating, the taking away from you, the selfishness that they have towards you, the hatefulness. That is true love. God loves us no matter what we do to him. Even the rejection that we give to him. He still loves us and he still wants a marriage for us. Marriage reminds us daily reality of living as sinful human beings in a radical broken world. Divorce is what the world claims is what you do. If you don't like someone, 
Um, if you don't feel like that person is good enough, you just divorce them. That's what you do. Move on to the next relationship until that, that person doesn't love you anymore. We aspire after love, but too often um, it descends into hate. I can tell you, um, and I've said this before, since my divorce, I can actually love my spouse now. I can love him for what good he does do. Um, and I can love him as God loves him. Because we all make mistakes. Um, and um, we have to live with our mistakes. Or we can change our mistakes. And we can make things right. And we can do what's right. And, um, you know, if that would have happened in my marriage, I wouldn't be divorced right now. But... That was not the choice that was given. And um, I can only take care of the decisions I make. And growing closer to Jesus Christ is my number one um, decision that I am going to choose to make moving forward. Romance love has no elasticity to it. It can never be stretched. It simply just shatters. That's divorce, you guys. That's divorce. Any mature spirituality, sensitive view of marriage must be built on the foundation of mature love rather than romanticism. But this immediately cast us into countercultural pursuit. What's the culture tell us love is? Um, I think that is the difference between a worldly marriage and a Christian marriage. A Christian marriage, you're going to go into a marriage wanting what Christ wants for your marriage um, other than romance. If you're in a worldly, you're going to go after lust and romance um, and I know a lot of people who are in those marriages that are just um, miserable because one or the other spouse um, does not have that Christ filled love in them and um, I was going to stay in my marriage even though I was not receiving um, any of that Christ-filled love from my spouse. A wedding calls us to our highest and best. In fact, to almost impossible ideals. You guys, when you get married, you have all these ideas of what life and marriage is going to be like. Um, you know, you only have your, your dream Wedding once. Um, you know, from someone who's been married three times and now divorced three times, I can tell you um, my dream wedding was with this third husband that I had. Um, it was in a church. It was small. Um... I felt like God was in my marriage to begin with. That's why I married my spouse. I felt the love from the church members and family members who were supportive of a Christian marriage. We read verses that our family members read verses um, as vows to us and us to them. Um, from the Bible. It was like a dream. 
The man I married had no kids. He had never been married before. We were an instant family. We made vows with our children that we were all going to become one. Um, we were going to um, have a Christ-filled marriage. And um, you know, I love whoever said this. It says the romantic roller coaster of courtship eventually evens out to a terrain of a midwestern um, interstate. So I live in Missouri, midwestern, and uh, you know, um, the interstates are long and uh, wide and um you know we can admit that every marriage presents these challenges and ask us to address them head on you know um if we find that same kinds of challenges face every marriages we might assume that god designed a purpose in this challenge that transcends something as illusionary as happiness so how do you define happiness in your marriage, you guys? I was the most happy in my marriage when we were doing something together for Christ. Worshiping him at church on Sunday mornings, his arm around me, us sitting in Bible study together, us talking about God together, us on the same page. When that was not happening, we were distant. There was no communication between us. There was no um, going the same direction. We ended up going two different directions on two different levels. I always felt like I was up here. He was down here. I always felt like I was pulling him. I always felt like we were going, you know, <laughs> craziness. Um, the only time in our marriage... I felt we were one was when we were with Christ together. It's amazing. And we were going up like this together. But then over here, behind closed doors, was the sin. Was the lies. Was the not being honest with each other. Was not working together. Was not communicating. Was not taking on these challenges that occurred in our marriage head on together open communication my divorce is not communication he's just in control i just have to do whatever he says it's not right it's wrong not working together as parents for our children not working together as husband and wife not focusing on what is God designed purpose for our marriage having that kingdom marriage we went to counseling together kingdom marriage discipleship not counseling but it was like counseling for me and I remember we would leave our counseling session and he would say did you hear what he said are you listening you going to do that? What? You're the head of the household. You know, I always wanted my spouse to step it up spiritually. And that is something that cannot be forced. I look at these marriages that are good marriages from what I see and these marriages of these people um, that I know that have strong Christian marriages they fight yeah they fight but they talk things out they work it out it's a give and it's a take it's a um, what does God want let's go open up our Bible and look and see what God's saying 
it's not taking scripture and twisting it. Um, when my husband said he wanted divorce, he took scripture and he twisted it. And I'm like, that's not what it said. This is still wrong. You can't do this. And he's like, well, I just did. I already filed. I already got the attorneys. I already filed. I'm like, oh, don't want to talk about it, huh? So it's something that we each individually have to decide who we're going to follow. Are we going to follow the world and do what we want? Are we going to follow Jesus Christ who says, hey, I put you two together. You are to stay together. You know, I don't really think God asked Adam and Eve, hey, do you guys want to stay together? Have kids? Live in sin? No, they were given a choice. I don't think Adam ever thought, even after the sin of um, eating the fruit that God said, don't eat. Do you think Adam ever said, hey, God, you want to make me another wife? <laughs> you know, I, I'm not happy with this one. You want to make me another one? You know, I do see my marriage in a whole different light now that I'm divorced. I see the good that we had, the good times, the happiness, the growing together closer to God. And I can see all the red flags. I can see all of the... Um, the lying and the cheating for what it is. I can see the selfishness for what it was. I can see my spiritual walk and what I did wrong. I can see um, my mistakes. Um, I can honestly say I wouldn't change anything um, except for one thing. And that was, I would have made sure that we were equally yoked before I married him. If what I knew now, um, was going to happen. Now, would I have married him knowing that we were unequally yoked? No, I wouldn't have married him. Am I glad that I did marry him? Yes. Because I've learned so much. I have a son. When I thought I was never going to have kids again. I... Um, had a, lo a lot of personal struggling that I had in my marriage um, of my growth with Jesus Christ in my relationship. What's my, my uh, goal, you know, as far as being a mom? What, what's God want me to do as being a mom? I can only be a mom even in my divorce with what I have. Um, and rely on God to be my provider. I don't have a spouse to provide for me anymore. You know, God gave us specific instructions in a marriage on what a wife should do, on what a husband should do in a family and in a marriage. And through my divorce, I really have learned a lot on what God expects of us each individually. And he expects that spouse to be provider. And when that spouse walks away um, spiritually and through a divorce, um, God is that provider now. God is that um, spiritual leadership of your family. And now that I'm head of my household and I make decisions, then I go to God. You know, he's next in line. And... Um, he really should be first in line in your life as a single mom. He should be first in your life 
um, you know, um, when you're married. And one thing I know I made a huge mistake is in my marriage is not praying enough for my spouse to be able to make those um, spiritual decisions correctly that he really needed to make. And um, this 2024, I'm going to be praying for my ex-spouse that he will come back to his relationship with Jesus Christ. And he'll do what's right when it comes to our son, when it comes to our marriage. You know, yes, he's with someone else. He shouldn't be, but he is. It's wrong, but he is. I am still to pray for him. I have not left our marriage. Um, I have not left God. And I'm doing what God wants me to do by praying for my ex-spouse. And I know a lot of people out there are just like, why? Why are you um, wanting to pray for him? A lot of my friends are like, I don't understand. <laughs> um, a lot of my Christian friends have, um, uh, and church members have said, hey, you need to be praying for your spouse. That's what you need to be doing. And I agree. Um, God put us together. He has a sacred plan for each and every one of our marriages. Um, I'm going to continue reading this book because, you guys, God wants us to be holy in him. He wants us to read his word and follow Jesus Christ. He wants us to have the sacred marriage with him. Um, you know, whether we're married or not. He wants us to be prepared like we're preparing for our wedding. You guys, Jesus is coming back very, very soon. I don't know how much time we have left. This could be my last video. We are to be one with Jesus Christ. One with our spouse with Jesus Christ in our marriages. If you don't have that firm foundation of Jesus Christ, your marriage is on sinking sand. I can tell you that. It's on sinking sand. It will shatter. And it takes two, husband and wife, to be on the same page. And you wives out there, Please don't think you can keep your marriage together when that spouse is not following Jesus Christ. You can't. Don't even try. Don't even try. It's a battle that is not yours. The battle is God's. Give your marriage over to Jesus Christ. Give your divorces over to Jesus Christ if that's what happens. Give your children over to Jesus Christ if they're being separated from you. That's all you can do is pray. Give it over to God. It hurts. It hurts to know that the person you love has rejected Jesus Christ. As a Christian... It hurts. But you guys, um, we got to do what God wants us to do in our lives on a daily basis. Um, he's coming back. He's coming back very, very soon. And what are you going to say to Jesus 
when he comes back? Are you going to be the one that's sinning and lying and cheating and stealing from your spouse? Are you going to be the one who is doing what's wrong? You know, let the blood be on that other person, that spouse, who's not following Jesus Christ. Wash your hands clean. Say, God, I surrender all. I give you my life, my marriage, my divorce, my children. And do what's right. You got to do what's right. One thing I know is when I stand before God, I can say, I did everything I could. And I know he's going to tell me, you could have prayed, you could have prayed more. You could have gotten into my word more. And it's something I really filled out in my marriage. But it's something that because of my divorce and loving my husband still, I can do that now. My focus is on prayer and reading God's word and doing what's right and standing up for what's right and standing up for my faith here on YouTube even. You guys don't understand how many comments I get of people saying, how do you love this man after he's done this to you? How do you do this? I don't know. Everything was taken from me. Evilness. It's a spiritual battle. But I still have my faith. And God, nobody can take away my faith from me. Persecution of Christians is coming, guys. Get prepared. Battle up. Your faith is going to be on trial. Are you going to choose Jesus Christ or are you not going to choose Jesus Christ? That's the question. Are you going to grow closer to him in your singleness since you're divorced now? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. He's my blessed hope. Man will fail you. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will forgive you for your sins. And, you know, it's great for me to know that I asked my spouse for forgiveness for what I've done. And I made a list. I wrote him a letter and I said, hey, will you forgive me for these things? And he came downstairs and he said, yeah, I forgive you. And he goes, will you forgive me? And I said, for what? Well, I don't got time to write it all down. That's not true forgiveness. That's not asking for forgiveness. That's I don't have time to care enough to ask you for forgiveness. I can't admit what I've done wrong. That's what that is. God has forgiven you, but he wants you to repent. He wants you to not only repent, but to turn from your wicked ways and follow him. That's what he wants. So if you're not following Jesus Christ, that's how you get saved. That's how he saves you. Repent of your sins. Turn from your wicked ways. Make Fix it. Fix the problems that you have. Take ownership of what you've done. Ask for forgiveness and make it right. I think of all the destruction divorce does to your family, your children, their future. When they are grown adults now, they will say, hey, dad did this, mom did this. And they will know. They will know. The truth will set you free. That's my, my thing. Truth will set you free. But the destruction 
it does along the way. It's like a tornado going through your household, knocking out the people in your life. It's destruction. It's evil. Satan loves divorce. God hates it. He hates it because divorce takes people away from him. And God does not want anyone to choose to reject him. He died on the cross for you. And God loves you very much. Hope this was encouraging. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.